evening, everyone. Good evening. Good to be with you all again. Um, I hope you found that series that we did on uh, the mind of Christ and obtaining the mind of Christ um, helpful. I hope it spoke to your heart and to your soul. Um, again, and we will continue to pray for people that are, are wrestling through, um, and there's a lot of it nowadays, the anxieties on the lack of contentment, that sense of internal struggle that we all go through, um, depression, uh, anger, whatever it might be. We pray, Lord God, we still pray right now for a release, a release of that, that your spirit would, would cast that out in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to read a verse to you today. It's going to be actually two verses to start from Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, and then from Romans eleven twenty nine. just a, a brief verse from Romans 11 that I'm going to segue right into after I read Ephesians. I, therefore, a prisoner... For the Lord, or urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. The calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called, just three times the word, called, to the one hope that belongs to your call. Guess what this sermon is about? Feeling called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And then from Romans, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For the gifts, and we all have been given gifts in the Lord, and it's not, you know, the same as like the ones that are under the tree. We all have been given gifts to be used for the service of the Lord, and the calling that is on your life in the Lord is irrevocable. Cannot be revoked. What does that mean? Yes, today's sermon is when the Lord calls. Now, why do we love our phones? The, the cell phone world has taken over, right? And, and people just walk around like this all day, right? I, I can't tell, and I'm guilty of it, so I'm not standing in judgment on people. I'm, I'm right there with you. The amount of people I've almost run into as I'm sitting here going like this, looking at it, but we do it. You know, where, where it comes alive for me is when, when you're actually in line, like at a customer service. Let's say you're, you're in there you're buying something for Christmas, and the person at the counter is talking to the clerk while they're this on their phone, and like, one thing's going to pull my hair out, right? We talk to our waiters and our wait staff that way, our waitresses, right? We're honorable. We can't get away from the phone. Why do we love it? To receive calls? Well, maybe to keep us connected with people. Maybe. I don't know. I, I actually think... The, the cell phone culture has done more to separate people from each other than it has done to, to bring it together. Can you imagine if Alexander Graham Bell was the one who invented the phone, right? Am I on that? Okay, all right. Imagine if he knew that this device that he created originally to help bring people together would one day keep 30 people in a room like this, not even looking at each other or talking to each other. That one day it would disconnect people instead of connect people. What a mind bender that must be for him, right? And, and still, our mass culture is walking around at dinner at sporting events, and, and you don't even look up. You know, you talk to somebody. I do with my kids. I say, hey, I'm not going to mention any names because two of them are in here, but hey, Caleb, how you doing? Right? And they're just like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And Luke and Eli and all of them. And you know what? Sometimes my wife, she looks at me, she says, hey, honey, how you doing? And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? Disconnected. But, but we... We originally said that we come with all these ways to try to connect with people. Some are actually predicting now, some experts that are doing like sociological studies, that the number one killer of relationships will be the cell phone. Because it just lacks any sense of intimacy. And that word intimacy means like a close personal relationship. And phones are doing the opposite. They're not bringing us together. They're separating us from each other. But they keep us updated on when we're trying to reach people. We become notified. Probably not gratified. I don't know that at least the contentment. But surely we become notified. By the way, I am one of those people where, you know the red bubble that tells you you have an email? Or the red bubble that tells you you have a text message? Or the red bubble that tells you you have a Facebook me message waiting for you or a Facebook notification. Those red bubbles, this is something that I, me and, and somebody who's a good friend of mine go back and forth on. When I look at that person's device and I see 3,000 unread emails, I start to perspire. I start to sweat. I can't stand it. It, it brings me complete anxiety over top. You have 3,000 unread emails. I said this at, at school to one of the teachers, and, and they're like, oh, I have 12,000 unread emails. Literally, I got hot. I needed to take a walk. 
I was exhausted from the conversation. All right, I can't deal with it. Imagine if we had a small group. Here's an idea for our, our faith groups, Pastor Don. Next time, if we want to get people to open up and talk, one thing we could do is we could sit 12, 15 people in a circle and just text message back and forth to each other, and we probably have more responses than just in dialogue. Right? That's the way in the culture. But but how lacking does that leave? Because leave us because if that's the way we're learning to communicate, what do we do when the Lord calls on us? Because the Lord doesn't use the light glasses. He doesn't speak to us through red bubbles. He's not bound and limited by the methods of our comfortability, is he? No, as a matter of fact, sometimes when the Lord calls us, it's the most uncomfortable feeling in the world. And in a culture who designs its communication for ease and comfort, what do you do with a Lord who says, I will not be bound by your methods of comfortability? Because when I call you, it's going to be out of your comfort zones. It's going to be places to you that, you that you may not want to go to. It's going to be the things that you might not think that you can do. We just sang it. If you lead me, Lord, I will follow. Where you lead me, Lord, I will go. The Lord leads us sometimes to places that we don't want to be. Sometimes like Jonah, I don't want to go there. But where you lead me, Lord, I will go. But we are a culture conditioned to hear what we want to hear. Delete what's red bubbles we want to delete. Take the time to respond to those texts that we want to respond to. All within the nice, comfy, cozy elements of our requires. What do you do with the Lord who says, I need you to go down there where you're the most afraid to the most afraid to go, Pastor Don. What do we do when we're forced out of our comfort zones? I wonder how many times we say, how many, how many of you have said, you were talking about the original hand, you're just thinking about it. You know, I feel like I don't ever hear God. I don't, I've had quite a few people lately come and say that to me, which is probably why this sermon is on my, on my mind. I feel like I don't hear them. And, and I wonder sometimes, because I can see in this person's life, God reaching them in so many ways. Little miracles, little things somebody might say that I'm like, oh, that's exactly what that person needs at the time. And that didn't even come from me. And I wonder sometimes, is it really that we don't hear God? Or is it really that we're not ready to hear God? Because we don't know if what he says is going to mean change for us. And we are a people oftentimes conditioned to not like change. Unless it's updating your iPhones and this and that, right? Not so much change that we can do. But God will push us. He'll tug us. We have this image of God as this gentleman who never pushes us beyond our comfort zones. I don't buy that view of God. When I look at what he said to Moses, when Moses said, but I'm not good with words. He says, you're going where I'm going to tell you to go. When I look at Jonah, who said, I don't want to go to Nineveh. You're going to go where I need you to go. When I look at Peter, you're going to go where I need you to go. Paul, who's who's actually persecuting Christians, you're going to go where I need you to go. So the idea that God will never push you beyond your comfort zones, that he's the perfect gentleman up there saying, well, when you're ready, that has not been my experience nor my witness. He will push you to those places, say things you aren't ready to hear, and call you at times you find inconvenient. Sometimes in the middle of the night. A rain. Rain. That's God speaking. God, you woke me up. You ever have one of those times where you wake up and all of a sudden something's so burned on your heart and you know it's from God and the day confirms that? God, three in the morning is not convenient. But he is who he is and he is not bound by the red dot notification on your Facebook application. When the Lord calls us, he, the creator of everything, calls us. We don't know when. We can't predict the times. We don't know where we'll be when he calls us. And we oftentimes don't even know how he called us. For some reason, we're hearing something in our head and we know it's from him. And there's many different types of callings, okay? We're going to go through a few of them today, all right? We're, we, well, the Lord is trying to get us to do something. Maybe call us from here to there, from a place of sin and debauchery to get something over to him, to release him, us, to free us 
We may not want to do it, but wherever he calls, I promise you this, wherever he leads you is the place that you are meant to go. That's the one thing I can promise you is I can't promise you you'll like everything we talk about. I can't promise you that you'll love everything he may ask you to surrender. But what I can promise you is where he calls you is precisely where you are meant to be. That's the one thing I can guarantee in all of this. And I can also promise you that there will be times in your life when you want to hide from that calling. There were times when I wanted to hide from a calling, including the calling of standing up here before you right now. Not necessarily today, but back when I first got into ministry. As my father always liked to point out in some of his sermons, my, my famous line was, Dad, I'll never what? Go into the ministry. the ministry. I thought you were going to black out. <laughs> I was getting ready to text you and say, it's the ministry now. Yes. Remember? Right? I, I thought it was the knocking. Yes, no, that's what he did. Not that's what my father. Go ahead, do it. show him what you used to do to me. I used to say to Ron. This is how it was when I used to say, you know, I really like working with people, and I'd like to sit down and help walk through, walk people through you know, what they're struggling with, and he would go. I'm, no, I'm fascinated by theology. I don't want to be a pastor or anything, you know, like, like that dad, but I love just talking about God. I think I'm going to go study some more in theology school. And he would go. And by the time it was done, I said, I got to go into ministry just so I don't have to hear. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> right? So, um, you know, from the beginning, from the first time God said, hey, Adam and Eve, where are you? People have been hiding from their calling. When the Lord calls, we're exposed. And so a lot of times we will hide a little bit from that. And there's all different ways that we want to hide, excuses we might give when the Lord calls. Let me give you some of them. How about this one? I am too broken to be called, Lord. You can't use me. My cell phone screen is all cracked up. I'm in shambles, Lord. You can't use me. You're not calling me, Lord. You're not calling me to, to, to heaven. You're not calling me to Jesus Christ. You're not calling me to salvation. Have you seen my screen? It's all shattered. I didn't buy the tempered glass cover. I'm a wreck. <laughs> and yet, he calls just the same. Blessed are you who are poor in spirit, who feel like your screen is shattered. For the Lord has been dialing up that number, since Adam and Eve bit the fruit, since David touched the forbidden fruit, since Jonah threw his cell phone in the ocean, and since Paul rode the trail of tears down Damascus Road, the Lord has been dialing up that number. The people that feel too broken, the people that feel that they're not good enough, the people who feel that the Lord won't accept them, God has been dialing that number from the very beginning. Don't leave here today thinking you're too broken to answer that call. Because that is one of the Lord's favorite numbers to call. I know that from experience, too. His calling has been the same since the beginning. Out of bondage, out of Egypt. I called my son out of bondage, out of slavery. You got addictions here today? You know what? The Lord knows how to dial that number. Out of bondage, I called my son. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Out of slavery, I called my son. You're struggling with something you can't get over? Listen, the Lord knows how to dial that number too. He's been dialing it for years. To lead us to be clothed with Christ. To have that screen restored. To know what it's like to feel redemption. And then his call to us becomes our call to him. Where it says, for all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All who answer that phone. My screen's cracked. Does this accept button work? seen my life? Have you seen what's on my internet browser here lately? Calling me endless? He's been dialing that number since the fruit was eaten. Don't think you can't dial yours. <coughs> Let 
like that saying, out of Egypt I called my son. Let that become not only a prophecy that rings true for all humanity on the cross, let that be a prophecy that rings right in here and grabs you. Out of Egypt I called you, my child. Amen? Amen. Because the Lord's calling is going to change you. It's going to change you. It always does. That's why we don't want to answer it first. That's why we need to be broken first. When do you go get your phone fixed? When the screen is shattered. I've watched people <clears throat> very close to me, <clears throat> slightly older than me, actually birthed me. Listen and d listen to a cell phone where you couldn't even hear what was coming out of the speaker, but would not replace it until it was lost. Sometimes you have to be lost. And you know what I'm saying? Lost and broken before you answer that call. Because otherwise, you'll just be going, huh? Huh? What'd you say? Huh? Huh? Wait, I can't hear you. Hold on. How do I get this thing on speaker? Huh? Huh? Sometimes you've got to be poured out, cracked, and dry to be found in the river waiting for him. Amen? Amen. And then that saying, out of Egypt, I'm calling you, will ring true to you. But let's say you're not right now. Let's say you say, hey, Pastor Ryan, I've already answered that call. My screen already went to the repair shop. I got the brand new phone. I'm all set. I've already answered that call, Pastor Ryan. I know what that's like to hit that accept button. Then let me ask you this here today. When is the last time you picked up the phone and answered the persistent ring and calling to be righteous and holy for the Lord says be holy as I am holy <clears throat> what good is a phone if you can only answer the first call how many would keep their phones if the battery drained after the first call and you could never use it no the calling on our lives over and over again is to be made like Jesus to be conformed in the image of his son the first among brothers the first among siblings that's the calling that's on your life. The same answer that you gave when you hit the green button that said accept is the button we hit over and over and over and over again. Because that battery cannot die. Be holy even as I am holy. The persistent reign of righteousness. Or do we think God's call is only for the, for the roots of the tree that would bear no fruit? We haven't been called simply to cut off the bad fruit. No, we've been called to bear good fruit in his name. To glorify the maker of the tree. To glorify the fruit of the spirit. You can't do that if you only answer the call once. Let me use an example. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to use it because I... I I got up here last week and I said about how my grandmother passed away. We just did the funeral. And that's probably why this is in my head. Because I'm thinking about when my father's mother passed. And I, something he doesn't even know I'm going to say this. But I never forgot that he said it was the weirdest thing when he went into his cell phone. Remember this? And saw mom. And after she passed, had three. You aren't meant to have one answer to one call in Christ to pick up the phone to get down on your knees daily hey Lord it's me I still hear you I still hear you calling I'm still picking up the phone Lord I'm still growing yeah I don't have this thing down yet but I'm still working on it Lord work out your salvation in fear and trembling for it is God who works in you Paul says I'm still answering Lord I'm still picking up the phone. If you're here and you answered the call of salvation many years ago, but you still feel cracked and dry, maybe it's time to answer the phone again. Maybe it's time to pick up the phone again and say, I know my screen's fixed, but man, I, this thing is fixed so that I can use it. Jesus, you paid the price, like Pastor Don was talking about. Find the cost of freedom buried in the ground. You did that so I could communicate with you every single day. You know the beauty of this cell phone we have with God? There's no dropped calls. You're not in the middle of talking and all of a sudden you realize that the person on the other end hung up like two minutes ago and you were rambling. No, there's no dead spots in this call. There's no dropped calls in this call. You don't have to worry about your 4G network going down to the LTE network or whatever it is. Answer the call. Be holy. Even as I am holy. The prophet 
prophets of old had their source of their words on speed dial. Like Elijah, who heard the voice of the Lord, not only in the winds, not only in the storms, not only in the earthquakes of life's misfortunes, but in the gentle breezes of tranquility, he heard, because there's no place that God's spirit can't go. There's no boundaries. There's no limit to the coverage zones. No signal loss. Every single day, you have the beautiful reception of answering the call and saying, where are we going today, Lord, and how are you growing me today, Lord? And sometimes that answer isn't so fun, is it? Sometimes he's going to grow us through some hard things, some things that seem to wear us down like we're wandering through the desert. But you know the great thing about the cell phone with Jesus Christ? place that that coverage can't reach you even in the midst of the desert sand. He'll send manna from heaven if he has to reach you. He'll draw water from a stone if he has to reach you. Now, maybe you say to me, all right, pastor, I answered the call of salvation. I'm answering the call every day to grow in righteousness. I'm hearing those calls I'm all set now, right? I mean, what is left for me? What call is left for me to answer? And, and this is what you've got to be with me. I told you before the sermon, I told you when we got up here at the start of worship that this theme was coming back and finding its way again. Listen, when you church plant, when you start something, when you worship together and you think about having a ministry that grows, you have to see yourself as part of a rescue team, part of a mission, because sometimes the answer that we have to give is for the Lord to tell us that we have to hang up and call somebody else who needs to hear it. It's answering the call so that you can say, okay, Lord, I got it. Let me pick up the phone and make a call to another. Amen? Amen. And that's the call I find in ministry that we avoid the most. The one where God, it's the one Jonah uh, wanted to get away from. I'm not going to Nineveh. You're not sending me there. It's the one Moses wanted to get away from. It's the one that some big names wanted to get away from. And it's the one we always want to get away from here. Hey, you, thanks for answering my call. Can you pick up your phone and call somebody else? Be my voice to somebody. For the word says that we are Christ's ambassadors. What ambassador sits in the embassy and doesn't speak? What ambassador has no testimony to give when they are in foreign land? How many ambassadors do you think would be hired if they never participated in reaching the nation they were planted in? Now think about that. What kind of ambassadors would be? Because the Bible says we are Christ's ambassadors. What ambassador is silent in the foreign land? You have a calling on your life to call someone else to the Lord. Amen? Amen. You feel that a little bit? Because you know what I found? While it's the one that we often ignore the most, it's also one that God could be the most persistent in. Simon, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Tend my sheep. Simon, he says it twice. Yes, Lord, do you love me? Yeah, Lord, I told you, I, I love you, Lord, yeah. Feed my sheep. But not just twice, he'll call you even three times if he has to, because that's what he does. Simon, yes, Lord, I'm answering you. Feed my sheep if you love me. See, so the Lord will keep dialing that number up until you not only answer it, but hang up and start calling somebody else. And the longer you procrastinate, the more you're going to get. Pastor Ryan, yes, do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep. And not just me, Bill Densmore, do you love Jesus? Yes. Tend his sheep. Nikki Bradley, do you love Jesus? Feed my sheep. The call to make another call. Say, nope, I'm too old, Pastor Ryan. The ringer doesn't work so well on this. I can barely hear it. My hearing's going. <laughs> What's that you said, Lord? The Lord has been dialing that number up since Noah. 
who despite his years heard the voice of the Lord with crystal clarity above all others. And I tell you, even Abraham in his old age could not resist the courageous, youthful heart to hear the Lord tell him to sojourn in a land that was not his own, to make a people that God could call his own. <clears throat> or maybe you say, if you're here, maybe you're one of my kids. Who run, yeah, I'm too young, and my parents don't let me have a cell phone. Don't use this against me. <laughs> and yet we forget that David was just a boy when the Lord called him to strike on the onslaught of a giant in their midst. So what excuse do we have? To not only answer, but to pick up the phone and do some calling. And then, brothers and sisters, when all those calls are answered and made, there will be one call yet on our lives still to come. <clears throat> Whether you answer that ring or not, there's one call left, and that's the call to come home. You know that one? You know that one? One call left to answer. So what should I do? I got one call left to answer? No. Am I ready to answer this call? So that I could stand before him and hear him say, not just through work, not through, not through cell phones, but face to face. Well done, good and faithful servant. God, God's call. Pray for that. Lord, you've given us a calling to be the church, not to play church. Not to play church clubhouse, but to be the church. And your word, Lord, says to the church of God, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon your name, Lord Jesus. You've called us as a slave out of Egypt, but you call us then to be a servant in your body, Lord Jesus. Teach us to have the courage without excuse to answer your call. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.